right, guys. It is a fine moonlit summer night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Saturday night at Bugs in a Jar Farm. That would be August 6, 2022. And the little dog and I, we need to get back down to this party of hippies down the street. The, the hippies are tearing it up on Saturday night and we're going to have some sort of a bonfire at midnight that I need to be getting down to. But before we head down to join a bunch of stoned hippies dancing around a bonfire, you know, I have received, you can imagine, the voluminous complaints I have received from uh, proud parents and grandparents here at Collapse Chronicles, all of the proud breeders that tune in to this show uh, with all of my child-friendly content here and, you know, imploring me, saying, Sam, you really need to open up your channel to the little darlings, to the little planet nibblers that, uh, you know, you need to bring your message to the younger masses. So, uh, in an effort to do that, we are going to, uh, I guess, make history tonight. You know, every time for how many years, every single video I've, I've ever uploaded to Collapse Chronicles, you know, YouTube asks the question, you know, is this video made for children? This is just video made for children, and for the first time ever, I guess I'm going to have to answer the question yes. So I want all of the breeders, all of the proud, happy breeders uh, tuning in to Collapse Chronicles to bring in your little children, your little darlings, or your little grandkids, or whatever little brats you have over tonight. And uh, we're going to have kids hour here, well, kids 15 minutes. And I'm thrilled to say this is from two professors right down the road at Binghamton University, about 30 miles from here. This is Michael Little and William McDonald from Binghamton U, writing for the conversation. You know, they, the conversation does this thing, I believe, on Saturdays called Curious Kids. Curious Kids, where these two guys, they take questions from, uh, you know, the lucky little, uh, the lucky little darlings who are going to inherit this planet. So these curious kids of all ages can uh, write to these men and ask a question. Now, I don't know the name of this child. This is Lottie. Lottie from Brookline, Massachusetts. Uh, she should be a lot more concerned what will the earth be like in five years. Uh, but Lottie is asking the question, what will the earth be like in five years? hundred years. Okay, what will the earth be like in 500 years? So, uh, Michael Little and William McDonald are going to answer Little Lottie's question, and I'm sure it's not just Little Lottie. I'm sure all of us have had the same idea, so we're going to hear from these two. I think there's some kind of anthropologist Take it away. Okay. <clears throat> this is plain English. So are your little kids, tell your little kids to put down the phone, put down the video games, and listen. All right. <clears throat> Take it away. Scientists can make some pretty accurate forecasts about the future, but predicting what the Earth will be like 500 years from now is a difficult task because there are many factors at play. Imagine 
Christopher Columbus in 1492 trying to predict the America of today. Yes. We do know that two main types of processes change our planet. One involves natural cycles, like the way the planet rotates and moves around the sun, and the other is caused by life forms, especially humans. Okay. The Earth itself is on the move. The Earth, you know, with or without humans they're talking about here, is constantly changing. There you go. With or without humans, this planet has been changing, will continue to change. We're talking about 500 years on a four billion year old planet. Okay, but I'm kind of interjecting this just in case the little children don't understand this because like millions of Alex Jones followers do not get it. Okay, uh, anyway, getting back to the little children, the Earth is constantly changing it wobbles, yes, the Earth wobbles, the angle of its tilt changes, and even its orbit changes to bring the Earth closer to or farther from the Sun. These changes happen over tens of thousands of years, and they have been re responsible for ice ages. 500 years is not very long in terms of geology. Wow, this, this is a real, you know, this is, we're explaining this to, I assume Lottie is a third grader, okay? Maybe Lottie understands 500 years means nothing on geological earth changes. What's going to happen over the next 500 years has nothing to do with geology. This is what these guys are saying. But now we're going to get to the crux of the article. So if geology is not changing the planet, what is changing the planet and what will be the catalyst for the big, you know, the changes to the planet over the next 500 years. Pop quiz, Lottie, do you know the number one biggest thing that's going to change this planet in your lifetime and over the next 500 years? Okay, it begins with the letter H. It is the H word. Humans Humans are changing the planet. It is not the G word. It is not God. It is not geology. It is humans are changing the planet. <clears throat> okay. The second big influence on the planet is living things. The effects of life on our planet are harder to predict. I, I don't know why. Uh, I've been predicting them uh, for, for how many years now? Life on Earth is, is doomed. Anyway, according to these guys, the effects of life on the planet are harder to predict. Disrupting one part of an ecosystem can knock a lot of other things off kilter. Humans, humans in particular, are changing the earth in many ways. Humans cut down forests. Hmm, well so do beavers. You know, come on, it's not all humans, it's beavers. Humans cut 
down forest. I have cut down, good Lord, how many trees have I cut down in the past? I've probably cut down as many trees as any human on the planet uh, in the past couple of weeks. Humans cut down forest and break up important wildlife habitats to build tiny houses, cities, and to grow crops. They move invasive species around the planet. They move invasive species around the planet. Of course, humans uh, are the single biggest invasive species in the history of the planet. Without humans moving them around the planet, there would be no invasive species on the planet. Okay, anyway. I'm just adding a little bit to uh, the good professor's explanation to little Lottie. Okay, humans move invasive species around the planet disrupting ecosystems. Humans also contribute to global warming. There you go. Humans contribute to global warming. People are causing the climate to change mostly by burning fossil fuels that release more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than the planet and our atmosphere can handle. Wow! Normally, you know, according to these long-term geological processes over the course of tens of thousands of years, normally greenhouse gases trap heat from the sun the way the glass of a greenhouse does, keeping Earth warmer than it would be otherwise. That can be useful. That can be useful until we get too much. The result of too much carbon dioxide is that temperatures rise and that can lead to dangerously hot summer days and melting ice in Greenland and Antarctica. Melting ice sheets raise the oceans causing coastal areas to flood. That is what Earth is facing right now. These changes could lead to a very different planet in 500 years, depending in large part on how willing, on how willing humans are to change their ways. Okay, little Lottie, would you be willing, if it was going to save the planet, would you be willing to take that, that little uh, smartphone of yours and flush it down the toilet? Okay, little Lottie. All right, little Lottie. If you were told you could never have another hamburger or hot dog, as long as you live, that you need to stop eating our, our fellow earthlings. Would you be willing to do that to save the planet? Lottie, if you were told not that you had to buy an electric vehicle, but that you could have no private vehicle that you will never own a car as long as you live in order to save the planet, would you be willing, little Lottie, to give that up? We know the answer to this. The answer, I, I'm not willing to do any of those. Okay, to save the planet, I have no interest in doing any of those any more than you do, little Lottie, and this is why W-A-S-F. If you don't know what W-A-S-F means, little Lottie, you need to go talk to, uh, to your mommy and she will explain W-A-S-F. 
because you better believe you are effed. Okay. A warming planet, you know, due to humans refusing to change their ways, a warming planet can also contribute to extreme weather like heat waves, storms, and droughts that can change the land. All of Earth's living forms are at risk. One more time. All, all, 100%, every single living thing on this planet is at risk. Starting with you, little Lottie. <clears throat> okay, we're going to learn from the past 500 years. These are anthropolo anthropologists uh, explaining this to you. Okay, so looking back at the past 500 years, the living part of the Earth, you know, that little thin little layer uh, right on top, that little part, the living part of the Earth called the biosphere has changed dramatically. Yes. Okay. The number of humans has increased from around 500 million people, like on the mentioned on the former Georgia Guidestones, which are no longer. The number of humans has increased from around 500 million people, you know, 500 years ago, to what they say is over seven and a half billion people today, about well, it's eight billion. So the population has of humans has increased 16 times over the last 500 years. Meanwhile, more than 800 animal and plant species have become extinct because of human activities over that period. As the human population grows, other species, otherwise known as our fellow earthlings, have less space to roam. Yes, as the human population grows, other species have less space to roam. Sea level rise means even less land, and rising temperatures will send many species migrating to better climates. Good luck. Okay, not all, all right, not all of Earth changes are caused by humans. But humans have worsened some of them. Hmm. A major challenge today is getting people to stop doing things that create problems, like burning fossil fuels that contribute to climate change and breeding little planet-eating darlings such as yourself, Lottie, to, you know, create more humans to burn more fossil fuels, to cut down more forest, to spread more invasive species, to build more cities, to build the 15 million miles of roads uh, on, the, uh, on the drawing board right now, you know, like that. You know, you know, so little Lottie, it's called not letting your knickers down. All right, you need to tell your, your little f friend Billy Bob, keep your little pecker in your pants, and I am not going to let my knickers down. Okay, you need to understand this, Lottie. Not breeding, not breeding is another way of saying doing every single thing else on the list. All right? Not letting your knickers down. Okay? 
is the big secret. All right, well, I'm glad they explained that, yes. This, meaning, are they talking about breeding? Breeding is one global problem that requires countries worldwide and the people within them to work toward the same goal. I guess they're talking about breeding. I don't know, whatever. What, what else is the what else is the one global problem if you had to pick out the one global problem well well humans are the are, are the problem you know what I'm saying anyway I uh, I'm not sure what the word this refers to anyway but getting back to Christopher Columbus so I'm getting back to Christopher and in case you do not understand this Lottie Christopher Columbus was the spawn of Satan. Christopher Columbus was one of the most bloodthirsty, evil savages ever to walk the face of the planet. You can lay as much blame on the carnage inflicted on this planet at Christopher Columbus's feet as any human right up till about Donald Trump. You have Christopher Columbus and then Donald Trump. All right, but anyway, getting back to Christopher Columbus, he probably could not have imagined a highway full of cars or a mobile phone. Technology will no doubt improve over the next 500 years too. Yes, technology will no doubt improve over the next 500 years. But so far, tech solutions have not scaled up fast enough to solve climate change Okay, I think this is from Albert Einstein. Okay. To keep doing the same things and expect someone else to fix the mess later would be a risky, expensive gamble. Hmm. So, so the Earth in 500 years may be unrecognizable. Or, if humans are willing to change their behaviors, keep their peckers in their pants, and not let their knickers down, Earth may persist with its vibrant forests, oceans, fields, and cities for many more centuries, along with its most successful residents, humankind. And there you go. Hello, curious kids! Do you have a question you would like an expert to answer? Ask an adult to send your question to CuriousKidsUS at TheConversation.com Yes. And since curiosity has no age limit, adults, let us know what you're wondering too. Yes. So, of course, you know what my question is. Is are we... And I'm waiting to see if the good professors will answer my question, are we? But anyway, we're going to listen to a few of the comments in case uh, you know, some of the readers uh, here of this article thought that the good professors left out a couple of things that they should have let Lottie in on. We're going to hear from this fellow named Humpty Dumpty. <clears throat> Humpty Dumpty says, No, Virginia, there will not be a recognizable planet in 100 years, much less 500 years. 
and you can thank Christopher Columbus as much as anyone in history for this obvious statement of fact. That was HD. Matthew says, in 500 years, there will be no record that humans ever existed apart from ancient stone structures. Yes. Uh, let's see. Here is Balch 33. When this planet is done with humans, no one will be able to do anything about it. We are just specks of dust in the grand scheme of things. Okay. Here is from someone calling himself business, talking to Lottie. Lottie. We have only got a few generations left. We, meaning humans, will continue to pollute our food and water supply until the chemicals in it render us unable to reproduce. This is one of the invasive species joining in the rat. Would you like to come join the rat, Mr. Invasive Species? Zay. <laughs> okay. Or a virus or bacteria will get us. Either way, in 500 years, the Earth will look more like it did 500 years ago. Okay. I don't know if my camera has collapsed or not. Uh, here is Jim. If no humans exist, no one will care. Yes, aliens probably have better options for a habitable planet. Okay, here is Blue's, Blue's Squirrel Monkey. What will the Earth be like in 500 years? In 500 years, the radiation levels should be starting to drop and the climate will gradually warm. The mutated, I think he meant to say cool, the mutated tribes of humanity may start to venture out from their caves and underground communities for extended periods to forage and hunt and start the whole process over again. Okay, here is German talking to Lottie and all children. 500 years? We need to be more worried about the next 15 to 25 years. Water shortages around the globe. Overpopulation crisis and then he says, in third world countries, how about the biggest overpopulation crisis on the planet, which Paul Ehrlich will tell you is the United States of America is the most overpopulated country on this planet, bar none. But he gets it half right because there is an overpopulation crisis in the third world and the first world and the second world and the fourth world. Anyway, food crises all around, yes, and extremely polluted air would and could overpower our combined magnificent efforts to thwart nature's wayward fury in its full glory. Quabina says, Atlas shrugged, David says, I don't think we, meaning humans, will be here. Yes, do you think so, David, that humans will not be here in 500 years? Either famine, disease, 
an extinction level event, some messianic despot with nuclear weapons or pollution making the air unbreathable, causing deadly respiratory disease. With the way we humans pollute and abuse our environment, I find it hard to believe that even small parts of the earth will be livable. Right now, we are at risk of losing one million different species due to current conditions. What would make anyone think that we will be around in 500 years? Thank you, David. Okay, here is Bad Billy. I believe humans are simply another species doomed to extinction. Yep. Uh, let's see. And we're just going to wind up. I could go on with this. We're going to wind up with Bello Fortis. Looking 500 years into the future, sans humans, sans humans, meaning without humans, and better for it. There you go. So there's actually some intelligent comments on the mainstream media. I don't believe it. No more humans and better for it. Anyway, uh, so we have had our little science lesson with some corrections by the uh, commentators. And so never let it be said that I do not make uh, videos for little children. And now that we have educated the little chillins, I'm going to go join a bunch of crazy stoned hippies and we're going to go burn something down probably start a damn wildfire. If you read about a, about a wildfire in the Finger Lakes of New York, uh, you can thank these stoned hippies down the street from me as my as Bugs in a Jar goes up in flames. I highly suggest you get out there and burn something down with a bunch of stoned hippies while you still can. Bye guys. All right, little dog. What, are you going to shake or are you not going to shake? We're not going to get the usual end shake. Bye, guys.